I am uh, very grateful to be here. I'm very fortunate uh, and very thankful to both uh, Alok Pandit and uh, Dr. Bhatia for inviting me back. I think I'm probably one of the rare returnees. I was very fortunate to be on this stage and uh, uh, have an award uh, in 2010. Uh, and I clearly didn't do so badly uh, that they very kindly asked me if I'd come back this year. Um, in terms of uh, taking things forward, um, the whole title of the conference is about looking forward. And so what I wanted to do was try and do something that hopefully, instead of looking back at history, what you will remember when you're here again, maybe in uh, 2020, uh, you'll look back and think that this was a moment at which maybe uh, some of your views about human behavior changed. Uh, and that's what we're going to try and look at now. So this is the modern marketer's guide to changing consumer behavior. And trust me, I've been on the 25-year journey as a brand manager, uh, starting off at Unilever. I know more about your hair and your armpit than normal people. Uh, but the harsh truth with all of this is, like many people, much of the theory and the things that I've been taught don't seem to work in reality. And the first time I realized that there was uh, other people who explained what I believed about human behavior was when I came across uh, the work of Daniel Kahneman. So if we take them first, uh, the work of uh, Daniel Kahneman, the guy on the left, uh, he's the only non-economist ever to win the Nobel Prize for Economics. Uh, and he describes himself as a social psychologist. And it's quite interesting when you think about his presentation. He went to uh, Stockholm. It's a very amazing white tie dinner. Everyone looks very fancy, probably in a room very nice like this one. Uh, and in front of the 600 uh, members uh, of the Nobel Prize Giving Academy, uh, he told them that he wasn't one of them. Yeah? And he did a very interesting set of experiments with them that showed that a lot of their thought and belief about their rationality and intelligence were just wrong. Yeah? Uh, he actually made fool of the, fools of them slightly with one particular test. I won't do it on you now. There is also a much more recent book called Switch, which are the two uh, brothers on the, the other side of the slide, Chip and Dan Heath. And if you're going to read one business book, then I would recommend genuinely that it's this one. I've read about 200. I'll admit now, I've probably finished only 50. Uh, I actually think that's quite a good record. Uh, but the truth is, with most business books, you get very excited after page 1 to 5, uh, maybe 1 to 25. But by the time you get to page 200, uh, the will to live has been drained from your body. Uh, and you're not as excited as you once were. But actually, uh, uh, Chip and Dan Heath's book, uh, Switch, really offers some very useful tools We'll try and use one of them later on about how you might change human behavior, some good learnings. And actually, there's another book uh, that Chip and Dan Heath stole the idea in their book. Uh, they didn't steal it. They borrowed it. They know the guy very well. There's another guy called Jonathan Haidt uh, who wrote a book called The Happiness Hypothesis. And in this book, he's the first one we've come across who used the metaphor of the elephant and the rider to think about human behavior, the elephant and the rider. And in thinking about the elephant and the rider, what he says is that as the rider, we think we're in charge. Yeah? We think that our rational, conscious, thoughtful brain is in charge of what's going on. But actually, the harsh truth, if you ever watch, is that the elephant decides where we go. When you're riding an elephant, uh, you probably, in India, you have some you know, traditions with training elephants and so on. I've also been uh, once to see the, uh, uh, the World Elephant Polo Championship. Uh, one of my colleagues uh, at one time was in the World Elephant Polo Championship. Uh, and I can promise you that if the elephant you are on wants to go to the forest, then you are going to the forest. You may think that you're directing where this elephant goes, but the truth is the elephant ultimately decides, and it's the one with all the power. And actually, with most of our decision-making processes, that's what's really going on. The rider's on top. We like to talk to the rider, but often he's facing in the wrong direction, and ultimately it's the elephant who's in charge. That's the analogy uh, that we're talking about. 